Hi guys, in this video I would like to share a breakout map which was built based on historical data from 2017 to 2022. A small segment is represented on the screen and later in the video I'll share more details on how it was built but also more importantly what were the key learning points that I could collect while doing this mapping exercise. The main open questions covered later in the video are as following. How many breakouts happen per year from 2017 to 2022? Can the bullish or bearish market environment significantly influence the number of breakouts? What sectors produce the highest number of breakouts? And the last one, is sector rotation significant enough to be considered into the breakouts trading strategy? So overall, four main open questions and four topics I look into while doing this mapping exercise. A small recommendation uh, on my side will be for you to watch the breakout setup Kolamagi style deep dive video first. This video is available on the channel. Um, the video you are watching now comes as part two and a continuation on the data interpretation from the deep dive that I did on the breakout setup. That's why it's advised for you to watch this video first. As a small reminder and to add a bit of context, um, during the deep dive uh, was selected a total uh, of 2,578 2, stocks in the universe and then the universe was split in below 10 billion group and above 10 billion group. What all these stocks had in common was the price above 10, uh, $3, an average daily volume more than 100,000 shares, uh, no bio biotech and no ETF where stocks were selected uh, in the universe. The timeline of the historical data that was studied during the deep dive was January 2017 to December 2022 using the TC2000 tool. A total of 963 breakouts were identified with 837 in the below 10 billion market cap group and a total of 126 breakouts in the above 10 billion market group. Um, as soon as I had the 963 breakouts, the first point was to see exactly when the breakout happened. And while adding this on the timeline, I was able to answer the first question, how many breakouts happened per year from 2017 to 2022? Here are the results and this is the first learning point while doing the exercise. I could see right away that in 2020 and 2021 happened an unusually higher number of breakouts than the previous years. It's kind of more than double. Uh, that's why this was the first chart that changed my expectation in terms of the number of breakouts and the occurrence of breakouts per year. A more realistic expectation will be to uh, have between 110 to 140 kind of breakouts per uh, year. Uh, I was also counting the average number of breakouts per month and per, at year level the numbers are as following. However, soon after I understood that uh, breakouts do not have an even repartition. As a result, uh, it's not a good logic to mm, track them uh, based on an average per month indicator. To prove this point in more details, here is the grand total of breakouts from 2017 to um, 2022 at monthly level. And what you see right away is, is spikes at monthly level with um, a lot of breakouts in some of the months and almost no breakouts as we see, for example, here in October, November, December 2018, for three months in a row, there were no breakouts. So due to these um, spikes and um, occurrence of breakouts, I kind of came to the conclusion that there is an irregular repartition of breakouts during the year. Uh, most likely you already saw the crazy environment of 2020-2021. Uh, with a lot of breakouts happening, we'll get back to that period of the chart later in the presentation. 
The next question I looked into was, can the bullish or bearish market environment significantly influence the number of breakouts? Uh, in the next slides, I will share the charts uh, and the maps of breakouts map themselves. They are very heavy in data. That's why I advise you to pause the video first, review the data for yourself, make your own due diligence and your own conclusion, and then hear my perspective as well. So pause the video if needed. Uh, here is an example of a breakouts map. In this case, it's 2017. And this is what I actually did. I took the SPY charts, ETF, and on it, I added for every breakout an arrow in the day when the breakout happens. And there is also a color coding uh, to it based on the sector where the breakout is coming from. So, and the list of sectors are listed on the bottom. What we can learn from the data of 2017 is the presence of uh, clusters within and between sectors. It's very well defined and evident on the data, the presence of these clusters. What is also nice to see on the 2017 map is uh, breakouts happening once every couple of days. Um, showing a good momentum on the market and a good overall sentiment in the on the market. Next, uh, this is the um, 2018 breakouts map. And here is what I highlighted for myself. A bearish environment at the beginning of uh, 2018 with almost no breakouts uh, at all. Then what I saw, and this is what I call now leading breakouts and lagging breakouts, is clusters of breakouts that happen, for example, in the case of leading breakouts, I call them like this because they um, formed as breakouts and then went sideways in a market environment that was bearish or very choppy. As a result, and then they had a breakout even without a clear confirmation uh, from the overall market. That's why I call them leading breakouts. And then you see the lagging breakouts, which wait for an overall market confirmation. And we see that on the charts by having a first leg, then a consolidation. And then we see more breakouts happening. Um, I call this situation uh, lagging breakouts. And then last point highlighted on this chart was a bearish environment and market correction end of 2018 for a couple of months where we see there are no breakouts at all. This one is the breakout map for 2019. Again, nice to see a nice a good repartition of breakouts every couple of days, breakouts happening, a good sentiments on the market, good momentum. And here is what I highlighted for myself. Um, we see beginning of 2019, after we come from a bearish market, the market overall in uh, showing a momentum, and then we see the lagging breakouts also uh, showing additional uh, momentum and having the breakouts. That was what I highlighted. The 2019 data shows also a breakout cluster within a sector. In this case, it's the healthcare sector, no biotech included, but very nice and evident sector momentum um, uh, happening. Another point what is, and a thought that I wanted to highlight is the absence of breakouts can be a first sign of potential market correction ahead. And this is an example of this happening. So almost no breakouts and then a correction ahead. Something kind of similar happening here as well uh, with no breakouts correction ahead. Uh, next one as a chart is the breakout map of 2020 and we see this crazy environment that happens in the 2020 2021 um, period so what i highlighted on this chart a bearish environment and again no breakouts in the period of february march april of 2020 and then a very very important point actually the 
it's, it's something that you can, could see also on the previous charts, but I wanted to highlight it here because it's very visible all across the year. The 10 days moving average above 20 days moving average on SPY is a very favorable environment for breakouts. And we, see, we will see that again and again on SPY. And this is a very strong indicator uh, on, the, uh, for, on the markets, especially for the breakout setup, something to definitely have in mind and watch for the 10 days above 20 days moving average. Um, and then this is like the most crazy part. When I was building the, the charts and adding the breakouts uh, on, the, on SPY, it was an, a crazy experience to see so many breakouts happening, especially in the period of December, January, February. So when I was adding them, the data was unveiling in a, such an unexpected way and such a crazy number of breakouts with uh, 5th and 6th and January 2021 being the crazy day possibly in the last 100 years with a total of 40 breakouts happening in within these two days alone. Yeah, it was a very interesting exercise and I was very happy to this, do this mapping and to get this better understanding on how the breakouts look like and when they happened. Guys, if you like the um, information you see so far, please give it a like and subscribe as it motivates and helps the channel a lot. Um, next one. J uh, thank you. Uh, next one. January 2021. So from 2021, what we see on the breakouts map. And here's what I highlighted for myself. So again, absence of breakouts. In this case, it's not so evident. There are more breakouts happening here, but the ab absence of breakouts signaling a correction kind of ahead. And then, of course, here what we know as the peak of the bull market of 2021 and the start of the bearish environment, uh, significantly less breakouts in November, December, January, 20, uh, November, December 2021 followed by the start of the bearish environment. Again, breakouts kind of signaling uh, the loss of momentum and a potential uh, downturn. Um, <clears throat> another point I highlighted based on 2021 data was the significant intraday clusters. We see that um, within the same um, industry uh, sector, but also we see a couple of sectors in a breakout momentum and a cluster here, the same situation. Um, and as a learning point from it is the fact that while we see breakouts happening in one or two of the um, stocks, it's a good idea to look at other stocks in the same uh, industry or sector to see if there is a good momentum built up in those stocks as well, or if there is already a setup in those stocks building up. And finally, the 2022 data, it's the year that we're very familiar and still remember uh, what happened. Um, and I personally have a lot of the backgrounds on, on this year in particular. So what we can see here, significant energy sector momentum. Of course, it was February, March 2022 when we saw an, uh, a very high energy sector momentum. It was due to geopolitical reasons, supply and demand. But um, looking backward, it was such an evident sector momentum. So I highlighted that on the chart. And this is in the context of such a bearish environment, the energy sector showing so many breakouts. So that was something unusual for even the last six years of data. Then again, highlighting the point that 10 days moving average, about 20 days moving average is a very important condition for breakouts to happen. We saw that in 2022, in the moment when uh, 10 days moving average was above 20, was a favorable environment for breakouts to happen. What else I highlighted was, again, the presence of leading breakouts, those that happened even before SPY showing a strong momentum and the lagging breakouts that happened after a better confirmation of 
momentum in the overall market. Um, and of course, two bearish uh, periods of 2022, um, significantly well-defined with almost no breakouts. Um, here is side by side. The chart on the left is the SPY ETF, and I wanted to share the um, energy sector um, ETF chart to see how big of a difference and how different is the story that each of the chart um, is saying. A SPY on the left is showing a very bearish environment, choppy market, unstable market, while the sector momentum is so well, so well defined. And honestly, I missed this chart at that time, but the sector momentum was so like for energy, sector was so well defined and there were so many breakouts actually happening. On this slide, uh, I took the bearish uh, segments of the market and put them side by side to highlight the point of the low number of breakouts that actually happen in a bearish environment like the period of January, February, March 2018 still has a, a, a number of breakouts. But later we see a market correction and bearish environment with absolutely no breakouts. Another point to highlight here is um, the, the month, the number of months of bearish environment. So in this case, it was a bearish environment from September till January. So like four or five months of bearish environment when you have to wait for the right market environment and completely stop trading the breakout setup. So a very good learning experience, of course, now having the experience of 2022 and the bearish environment, uh, what an important takeaway. And I wish I could knew this sooner regarding the performance of the breakout setup in a bearish environment. Another point to highlight, maybe it's not such an evident good idea, but what I saw is that the breakouts occurring every couple of days can suggest that the market is in good health. Uh, we see that on the 2017 data and 2018, where every couple of days we see breakouts happening, which is suggesting a good overall momentum sentiment in the market, also in the lower cap um, environment where usually most of the breakouts happened. So um, yeah, it's like the breakouts can serve as a kind of a diagnosing tool for the markets where they are kind of like a hard bit of, of the momentum and the health of this uh, market sentiment overall. So an interesting point to highlight. And then from it also comes an idea um, it's actually a good idea to kind of develop a process and track every week how many breakouts happen in different sectors because this can suggest the appearance of mom uh, momentum or uh, the, the lack of momentum in the market. All the um, breakouts and all the print screen that are shared in the presentation uh, for SPY, but also for all at individual sector level, all of them are available on the link in the description uh, in case if you want to make your own due diligence and study them in more details, they are available for downloads on the link in the description. Here are a couple of insights and some learning actions following this mapping exercise. So of course, breakouts come in clusters within with significant correlation with sector or market momentum. There is enough data for the last six years to prove this point. And then what I took as a learning action for my side is to gain sector perspective and look at what other stocks in a sector industry are doing to confirm presence of momentum. So I'll try to do that more of this in the future. Then it was clear the difference um, in the number of breakouts in a bullish and bearish environment. And the kind of learning point and action I took for myself was to have a more aggressive on and off modes and be ready to incre increase significantly the exposure when the market is favorable and stop trading even for months when the market conditions are not there. Um, especially also coming from the trading experience of 2022, 
Um, this is such an important learning point to stop trading even for two, three months, a specific setup, in this case, the breakout setup, because the market is not uh, there and the market conditions are not right. So yeah, that, and then overall the breakouts and SPY relationship and the signal that comes from SPY, what I took as an action for myself was to create a process to track stocks individual, at individual level, think within a sector context and trade the setup. There are situations when a lot of breakouts happen, even if SPY didn't do much. It's something as personal that sounds logic, uh, but after looking at the data, it gave such a clear confirmation and it was such a clear takeaway. SPY is created from bigger cap companies and their signal and their move on the market is weaker. And what I learned from the deep dive is that most of the deep uh, of the breakouts happen by far in the below 10 billion companies and those are smaller and they um, grab the momentum much faster. That's why always following SPY can be like kind of misleading and you have to have processes to track the stocks at individual level. Where SPY is most useful is of course bearish market, market corrections, because this is where there is a significant correlation. Um, but, and of course, to see the 10 days moving average above 20 on SPY is also a useful element. But in addition, make sure to track and follow the price action at individual stock level as many uh, breakouts happen kind of in the background. Next question I would like to cover is what sectors produce the highest number of breakouts? In this case, I would like to go into the, the table that sounds a bit complex, but it, share, it has some important points that I wanted you to know. The first column are the sector name. The second column is the number, shows the number of um, stocks per sector and gives a better understanding on how big each of the sector is. Uh, all these stocks are above $1 and the data source is stockcharts.com. Um, the third column represents the studied universe part of the deep dive. And then next thing what I did is to understand how well represented is each of the sector in the deep dive. And I was surprised actually to see such a, a low number. And I tried to double check the data to see what caused such a significant decrease in the a deep dive studied list. And actually it's the average daily volume above 100,000 that significantly decreased the number of stocks um, eligible for the study. So um, overall, this if this is happening, I'm kind of happy with it. I will not trade stocks, breakout setup in stocks below 100K. So if this is the case, then I consider the data relevant. What I learned and what you see right away also from the last column of the table is five sector produce significantly more breakouts than the rest. And breakouts can highlight sector momentum. We saw that with the example of energy sector, by far the most evident sector momentum in the last six years. Next question I looked into was, is sector rotation significant enough to be considered into the breakouts trading strategy? To do that, I try to do the map for at monthly level for each sector. And this is how, so that I can identify also some sector momentum and how uh, across, during the years, this alternation between sectors is happening and is there such an uh, kind of um, alternation between sectors. Um, so here's what I saw. The first one, technology, consumer discretionary, very um, um, significant um, kind of correlation with uh, technology. So kind of doing the same. Uh, but I was also surprised to see there is no breakouts happening in 2022 in this sector. The next one, uh, industrial sector, 
with a nice number of breakouts in 2022, even uh, considering it was a bearish market. Next one, energy, of course, the significant momentum of the last two years, very evident here, also in terms of the number of breakouts that happens. And the last big sector creating breakouts, healthcare, with a bit of breakouts kind of in all the, all the time. And what we see 2022, surprisingly a high number of breakouts, maybe because healthcare is a defensive sector and it was uh, traded more considering the bearish environment. What you'll see on this slide are the next six smaller sectors um, in terms of the number of breakouts. Financial, for example, is still a very uh, big sector with, I think, more than 800 stocks within the sector. But the number of breakouts happening in the sector, not so much. Also here, it, the scale is changed. Here is 0 to 10. The previous one was 0 to 30. So here's what uh, we see. Financial materials, uh, consumer communication services, real estate, staples, and utilities. Uh, overall, this is the display of breakouts in the uh, bottom six sectors. I would advise you to pause and review the data, make your own conclusions, but overall a small number of breakouts. I'd like to put side by side again the charts in terms of SPY and energy sector. By far in the last six years, if I'll consider the, this idea of sector rotation and sector momentum, by far, the energy sector was the one showing the most significant kind of a sector momentum against the overall market, which was bearish. Um, in the previous years, um, most of the time, the sectors kind of go together and there is a good synchronization. So I couldn't say that the sector momentum is a very strong strategy in the breakouts um, setup, but it's still something to take into account and to look for when scanning for the breakouts to see if there's two or three um, stocks identified coming from the same sector. Um, the last insights following this mapping exercise um, here is the first one, of course, like I said it for myself to decrease my expectation and kind of forget 2020 and 2021. It was a crazy once in a hundred years time uh, market and not sure we'll see that soon. So now I kind of expect uh, between 100 to 140 breakouts per year and I will adjust my trading strategies accordingly uh, to this expectation. Then. And a very important point highlighted during the uh, mapping exercise, this idea of on and off mode and uh, waiting for the right, uh, what, how important it is to wait for the right market conditions. We saw that the bearish environment, it's also logic, but the bearish environment has doesn't give almost any opportunity for to trade the breakout setup. That's why, uh, not trading for three, four, five months is something that I have to learn as a trader when it comes to the um, uh, breakout setup. The last one, trade the setup uh, and follow the price action, especially because most of the breakouts happen in the low to mid cap markets um, uh, like group and watching for the SPY and the confirmation from SPY can not always be a good idea. So um, SPY can have a weaker signal than the rest. And also what I saw, there are also these elements of leading breakouts and considering this, uh, what, making individual stock level processes, following the price action, watching for the setup and trading the setup is um, very important.
um, the breakouts map where it gave a lot of learning points and um, coming soon is the episodic pivot setup map for the same uh, time period 2017 to 2022 that's why if you like the, this video please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video coming soon on the episodic pivot map i'm also curious to see how the data will align on spy on the episodic pivots. Thanks a million for your likes, subscribe, a subscription, your comments, and uh, all the feedback you gave me on Discord, Twitter, or um, other forums. Uh, wish you a great day. Peace.